I went through a divorce in 2012. I was very heartbroken. Just to be clear, you took out a loan for this, right? Yes, I did. Wow. Yes. Almost a year now, and you're asking me for freaking gas money. And that is when reality kicked in. And I thought to myself, geez, okay. Today, we are going to be speaking with Lilani from South Africa. She has been talking to a man online who claims he is living in Erzincan, Turkey, for work. Lalani met him on Instagram and later continued their relationship on WhatsApp. He ended up duping her out of $3,000 using another man's photos. We appreciate all of the support, so don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Let's get into it. Lalani, welcome to an episode of Scamfish. You have a very unique story because you live in Africa and you've experienced so many of these things that we teach people about. Tell us about your story. Let's hear about it. How did it all start, Leilani? Okay, it started in April last year. I went through a divorce in 2012. I was very heartbroken. And yes, I'm not a type of person that actually enjoys social media at all. I don't do those dating sites. It's not for me. And I had to find ways to uh, get myself back. I opened a page um, on Instagram, but under a writer's name. And yes, this is where my story with this game has started. And then what happened next? When when you put the profile out there, what did you hear and or what did you see after that? Well, obviously, as I said, I didn't do it under my own name. Um, there was only a picture of myself on my Instagram account. Um, but yes, this person then approached me and he started having a conversation with me. What was his name? Coxwell McCarthy. When he started talking to me, it was a normal, nice conversation. It was not, hi, baby, you such a sweetheart, oh, you look beautiful. We immediately kicked it off starting to talk about COVID and the effect that it had on the world. I'm a very intellectual person, so I need my mind to be stimulated. And when he started talking about that and the economic and uh, or the economic effect of COVID and um, the physical effect on people, um, that was quite interesting and I enjoyed the conversation. Were you starting to have feelings for him? Were you still a little uneasy? How were you feeling? I did not develop feelings straight away. When he and I was having conversations, it was more like um, friendship. Um, mm -hmm. He did actually ask me if I'm single and will I get into a relationship again? Um, that kind of stuff, as I say, normal conversation. You're doing everything right up until this point. What made you want to go to WhatsApp after that? I'm a very busy person. Um, I've got a bit of a sad life. Um, I have a brother that's been battling with um, a drug addiction for about six years now. And I'm also looking after mom and dad. Instagram kind of gets annoying because you want to get more personal. As I said, I felt comfortable enough to give him my number and go over to WhatsApp. I almost lost my brother. Um, sorry, I'm going to get emotional. Um, he took an OD. I had to go and save him. He actually, his heart stopped like in three times while I was holding his head in my hands and the ambulance people was there and they told me they're busy losing him. Um, so I was at a very emotional stage in my life um, battling with this, my brother's addiction and um, he was very supportive of that. Um, I felt quite embarrassed because it's not always easy to admit that you've got an addict in your family. And when I eventually started talking to him about it, he was just so amazing with regards to that. Um, I remember the one time he told me, um, listen, um, at the end of the day, love conquers all. Um, you should not feel embarrassed about this because you're not the only person that's actually dealing with this. And each and every day for that um, time that my brother was in hospital, he would pop in and just say, hi, Lani, um, what's your brother doing? How are you feeling? So you must understand that kind of um, connection. Yeah. Obviously, you're going to start developing feelings at the end of the day because he's, he's damn sweet. 
be yeah. supportive. Um, all the qualities that you would actually look for in a relationship. And with that, I started developing feelings for him because he he really helped me cope with my circumstances of dealing with my brother and his addiction. At that point, did you have a lot of other people that you were talking to, you know, or that you could go to? He was that person. He became that person. Um, as I said, I have difficulty connecting with people because I'm an empath. Um, and as I said, um, I'm also looking after mom and dad. So mom and dad has been going through the same stress. Um, I mean, it's their son. So they were very dependent on me also to give them support. What are the other things that he asked money for? And when did you finally have that aha moment? Like, this guy doesn't care about me at all. He just wants my money. It's always been a dream of mine to actually go overseas. Um, so I started planning our trip to meet one another. And he was so excited about it, as am I. And um, I took out a loan at the bank. I went to a travel agency, started with the negotiations to actually book this trip of mine to Turkey. Just to be clear, you took out a loan for this, right? Yes, I did. Wow. Yes. And now I need my confirmation um, from the hotel because I need to apply for my visa. Right. And I kept on asking and kept on asking and he said, baby, I haven't received the money yet. Um, rotten excuses that really didn't make any sense. but. Being the person I am, I accept that. You're about to leave on this flight, and then right before you're about to leave, all of a sudden now, he has this issue where he doesn't have his laptop and his phone, and he's like, I, I need money so I can get it back. And you're thinking, I've booked everything, I've planned this whole trip, I'm about to leave, and I need to make sure I can get to you. So you're like, here, here, here you go, so that we can figure this out later on. And okay. what happens after that? So on that Wednesday, he contacted me again and um, asked me uh, what am I going to contribute for him to actually come and fetch me at the airport. And I thought to myself, oh, gee whiz, you're um, you waiting to meet me for almost a year now and you're asking me for freaking gas money. I mean, really? Wow. And I got so cross with him and I flipped and I said to him, you know what, you're really hurting my feelings. If the roles would have been reversed, um, I would have been so excited to get you at the airport. Gas money would have been the last thought on my mind. So that specific evening, he told me, really, just please just help me with this. You know my um, circumstances. I'm really financially, I'm battling. I'm flat broke and I know that you are, um, you're feeling offended and feeling hurt. But can you just help me with a little bit of money just to come and, and, and get you at the airport? So I said to him, okay, I will see if I can make a plan. Calculated as I am again, I go to Google. Um, I'm now searching how much is um, a, a gallon of gas in, 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 in Lira, um, the Turkish Lira, and how much is, is um, uh, I need to work out now how far it is from the airport to the actual hotel, and I'm calculating um, how much money I should actually transfer uh, for this gas money now. And um, at the end of the day, I came up with an amount of about $50. And he really got cross with me and he said, baby, can't you push for $100? Because I'm dying of pain. I just want to go and get um, painkillers as well. Empath, playing with my heart again, shame, you're not feeling well. Um, okay, I will help. So I transferred another $100 to him. What happens the day of the flight? I didn't have coffee. I didn't have breakfast. I didn't eat that evening because now with COVID on the flights, they give you these little meals. It's yeah. pathetic and it's it's bread, which I can't eat because I've got a gluten allergy. So I was really hungry. So I told myself, Lani, okay, well, you in the circumstances, now you need to, to, to find your feet. Um, so I spoke to the people at the hotel via Google Translate and asked them to direct me to a shop so that I can actually go and buy beverages. Uh, which I did and I came back and I just kept on phoning. He just did not answer. He didn't respond to my emails. He didn't respond to my calls, nothing at all. And that is when reality kicked in. And I thought to myself, geez, okay, 
literally rushed on a plane after your brother almost overdosing and you're you leave and you think you know what i'm gonna see the love of my life i'm gonna be at peace you know everything's gonna be all good in the world as soon as i land you land and you start messaging him and he ghosts you again now you're stuck in a foreign country by yourself don't speak the language don't know where to go or who to talk to how does the rest of that trip end well at the end of the day i'm a very strong person um if you put me in circumstances then i will always find a way to swim so heartbreak is the aim i just told myself listen you paid for this holiday make the best of it sure. uh which i did at the end of the day it was a bit hard because uh two days before my flight they implemented covid regulations in turkey again so um the uh, tourist tours were cancelled um you couldn't take uh the trains and you couldn't take any buses at the end of the day i just decided you know um i love old buildings and statues and stuff so i looked that up on google and in in the evenings i would have find um places that's not too far from the hotel and in the mornings i would wake up and pack a backpack with my two cell phones and um with my google maps and then i would just walk there were some days that i actually walked about 10 kilometers <laughs> um but i enjoyed myself it was it was really fantastic um and um i just actually absolutely refuse to 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 break down i want to save another woman of the crippling um heartache that i had to endure right. um so i need to spread awareness um i need to post this picture on 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 scammer pages um just to help somebody uh, not to go through what i had to and then i approached you guys i wrote you a mail and i said listen i'm south african i don't know if you're going to help me I don't know if um, my story is going to reach one of your desks um but this is my story and you guys responded the next day and then um Lenny from your department suggested that i follow your facebook page you know you've been so courageous to tell your story and and i thank you so much for the time any advice for anybody who's going through this right now so as somebody that's watching this right now that has questions that has doubts what advice do you have my advice for them is not to become a victim and give them power over you um take a stand and speak up keep on doing your homework before you get into a relationship and please definitely the golden rule of of online relationships don't send money Well, I appreciate you staying up it to do this. Um you have a wonderful evening and we'll stay in touch, okay? Thank you so much and thank you for having me. Absolutely. Okay, then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching another episode of Scamfish presented by socialcatfish.com. See you next time. Are you unsure if the person you're talking to online is real or fake? Maybe you've been trying to get a family member or friend to come to terms and you have a story that you'd like to share about a romance scam. If this is you, email us at sharemystory@socialcatfish.com. By allowing our YouTube audience to hear about your experiences, you can educate them on what you went through and the signs you witnessed. Education is the best way to prevent these scams. Your story could be the reason thousands of scams are prevented.